Well, everybody, this is Cruise Man. Taking a ride on my 2018 Goldwing DCT. Now, this is the first time that I've tested this new Cena Bluetooth backpack for the GoPro. I've been trying it. I've tested it a few times and never been able to get it to work, so hopefully it'll work today. It's kind of windy today. I'm anxious to see how the microphone handles the wind and how the Bluetooth connection between the GoPro and the Cena. I'm using a Cena 20S headset and I've got the, uh, I don't remember the part number, the Bluetooth backpack for the GoPro. I'm using a Hero 4. So hopefully it's all coming out. I'm also trying this uh, ultra high definition uh, voice setting that it has. You know, I wanted to talk about the Goldwing more than the Cena backpack. I have had a lot of comments on my first impressions video and I want to thank all of you for taking the time to write your thoughts and share your opinions of the video with me. A few of you I think might have misinterpreted my thoughts uh, on this new Goldwing to be negative. Um, I mean, yeah, there's things I tried to point out about this Goldwing compared to the previous generation Goldwing, but in no way did I mean it to uh, mean to suggest that this is not a bike that you should buy. I'm just trying to point out what I consider to be the truth and the facts surrounding this new motorcycle. I think it's a, an impressive bike, but you know, I feel like it's I guess my uh, responsibility, you might say, to, to tell you my honest observations of the motorcycle. And since I came off of a Goldwing, and that's what I'm most familiar with, because I've been riding one for about 11 years, I think I'm fairly qualified to talk about how this bike compares to the previous generation Goldwing. As I ride this bike, I'm just going to tell you what comes into my head, what my thoughts are. First of all, it's a smaller bike. It's much smaller. It's, I say much smaller. It's a smaller bike. It's still a big bike, but it's definitely smaller than what you're used to if you're coming off of a 2001 to 2017 Goldwing. That's not a bad thing. That's just a reality. And you feel it as soon as you get on the bike, as soon as you take off and go down the street. You can, it feels more nimble. It feels sportier. Now, whether or not that's a good thing depends on your style of riding and you know what you're looking for from a motorcycle. There's three kinds of riding that I do. 90% of the time I'm riding around town. I'm going to have coffee in the morning or I'm going to lunch. This bike is my daily driver. I don't have a car. This is my mode of transportation. If I need a car, I use my girlfriend's SUV. And uh, otherwise, I'm usually on the bike. If it's not pouring down rain or ice and snow and 25 degrees, I'm usually on the motorcycle. So 90% of the time, that's how I'm riding the bike. I may be going to the grocery store. I may be going to Costco or whatever running errands, going to the bank. Now, the other type of riding I do is what I would call medium distance riding. I'll ride the bike out three or four times a year to see my brother in Midland, Texas. That's about a 350 mile trip one way. So, you know, it's a, it's a day ride for me. But once I get there, I park the bike in his garage and we use his car. And, but I have to be able to take enough stuff with me you know, to last four or five days. The third type of riding I do, which is low percentage, maybe 3% of the time, is Ricky and I will go on a two or three week road trip. We'll just take off and we'll go. Now, if we're doing that kind of riding, um, we're pulling a trailer. I can't get my stuff and her stuff on this bike or even on the previous Goldwing. Now, I could get all my stuff on the Goldwing when I ride out to see my brother. I could easily get everything I need in the saddlebags, the trunk, 
I had a luggage rack, but I never even used the luggage rack. I'm not going to be able to get all my stuff on this Goldwing to go out to see my brother for three or four days. I know I've seen videos of guys who travel with their girlfriend or their wife, and they can go for two weeks with the saddlebags and trunk on this motorcycle, and I envy them for being able to do that. There ain't no way in hell I'm going to be able to go. With my girlfriend, I couldn't go overnight. She carries more makeup than what this bike will hold. So that's just the reality. I would say effectively this bike has half the luggage space that the previous Goldwing had. When you add up all the cubbies that it doesn't have, uh, just general storage space, it's about 50% of what we had on the previous Goldwing. Now, can I live with that? Sure. I'm going to invest in a seat bag. I'm going to buy a bag to put on the back seat, and I can carry all my stuff for three or four days or even two weeks in that bag, most likely. And if we're on the long haul trip, we're going to take the trailer anyway. They're going to sell a lot of trailers for this motorcycle because there's going to be a lot of Goldwing owners that buy this bike, and they're going to spend a lot of money trying to turn this into the previous generation Goldwing. They're going to buy bigger windshields. They're going to buy highway pegs. And if Honda doesn't fix the damn GPS, they're going to be buying a new GPS. But, you know, it, when we come from the Goldwing world, you know, Chris Caliente, my friend out in Tennessee, he said, you know, Americans like big bikes. They like, especially Americans that ride gold wings. You want the truth? You want the truth? You can't handle the truth. And this is not a big bike. This is like a luxury sport touring bike, is what I would call it. They should have actually made this the ST1800 because it is a sporty touring bike. It's more on the luxury side than a typical sport touring bike, but this bike is not built. Honda didn't build this bike to compete with the Indian Roadmaster and the Harley Ultra, you know, those big, or even the previous Goldwing. This bike would be closer to compete with something like a Kawasaki Concours. Obviously, it's bigger and more luxurious than that, but it would come closer to matching the touring capability of a Kawasaki Concours than it would the previous Goldwing. The, uh, I think, personally, I think the suspension is excellent. I think it's as good as I was expecting or better. I was, that was my biggest complaint with the previous Goldwing was the, uh, the front, mostly the front suspension, I just thought was way under equipped for that size bike. But this bike, I think the front suspension is dynamic. I know there's a lot of videos out there about problems with the suspension and they, you know, talk about how it's undersprung and maybe it is. But you know, I know that these suspension guys, they're, they're track guys. They ride sport bikes and they go out to the track and they put suspension through the paces. I'm not going to ever have this motorcycle on a racetrack. What you're seeing right now, that's my racetrack. Hebron Parkway in Carrollton, Texas, that's my racetrack. I live in Dallas, Texas. A, a twisty for me is the drive through at Wendy's. You know, until I take this bike to somewhere like North Carolina or Tennessee or Kentucky, there ain't no twisties in Dallas-Fort Worth. The suspension is more than enough, more than capable enough for a bike that's used as a commuter or a touring bike. When you get this bike on the highway, it's smooth as silk. When it comes time to replace the suspension components, maybe at 30,000, 40, 50,000 miles, whatever, sure, then I might look at an aftermarket su suspension solution that maybe is better quality and has more travel and all that. If I'm going to spend the money to replace it anyway, maybe at that point, sure. But I'm telling you guys, if you're interested in the 2018 Goldwing, don't let these videos dissuade you from buying one just because they talk about the suspension being no good. It is good. 
Go ride one, you'll know what I'm talking about, especially if you're coming off an earlier model Goldwing. This engine, while it is similar in power delivery, I'm sorry to say, one bad thing in my, for me to say is it's not as smooth as the previous generation Goldwing. I know most of you have probably seen the, the videos online where you put a nickel and stand it up on its end on the engine casing and you can rev the engine and the nickel doesn't budge. Well, this engine's not gonna pass that test. Oh, there we go. I got it to stand up. Okay, so now let's try revving the engine. Nope. I've tried it, I know. I couldn't get the nickel to stand up. I could barely get the nickel to stand up with it idling. And where you really notice this when you're riding the bike, at about 2,000 to 2,100 RPM, you start getting a resonance in the handlebars. It's very slight. It's very slight. It's not a deal killer. It's not bad. You also feel a little bit in the foot pegs. If you go take this bike for a 10 minute, 15 minute test ride, you'd probably never notice it. But when you've ridden the bike for a while and you're coming off a previous Goldwing, you will notice it. It's almost a, a mild buzzing in the handlebars at about, I'd say 2100 all the way up to 2500 RPM. I haven't gotten my bike much past 2500 RPM, so I don't know how high it goes. Interestingly, that resonance, I call it, comes in at about the same time as that engine drone from the exhaust. And I'm wondering if there might be a connection. Maybe this is an exhaust resonance that's coming back through the frame, I don't know. I love the windshield. I love the electric windshield. I know some people say, well, the windshield's not as big, but they're going to, aftermarket will solve that problem. I didn't think the stock Goldwing windshield in the previous model was big enough. I had a uh, V-Stream, a V-Stream uh, special, I think they call it, special edition, and I love that windshield. But I know some of you guys have the F4, and you know F4 is going to come out with a wider, bigger windshield for this. I'm really getting to love this DCT transmission. And I know a lot has been written about it, and a lot of people have talked about the DCT. Now, it is a very smooth transmission. It's very smooth upshifting when you're going through the gears. When you're accelerating, I mean, this thing, you don't even feel it shift. It's buttery smooth. You do feel it when you're slowing down, coming to a stop on downshift. You will feel it uh, downshifting because it's got six gears it's got to go through to get back to first gear. And if you're slowing down rapidly, if you have a slow descent, a slow slowdown, it's not a big deal. But if you come to a rapid stop, you'll feel it, come, you'll feel it going through the gears pretty harshly, I might say. And uh, it actually does a pretty good job, even if you say you're coming in from 40 miles an hour and you've got to slow down and take a 90 degree turn. And you need to accelerate once you get to that turn. It does a very good job of picking the right gear for you to make that move. The fuel delivery is excellent. You don't have that low speed stumble that you had, or I had on my 2012, where at about 30 miles an hour, if the bike is cold, it just, the engine just kind of stumbles at a certain point. You don't have that. Of course, I've already talked about fit and finish and the paint issues. I will say one thing, an update on the paint issues. Uh, Honda has agreed to replace the painted panels on my bike. That's good, under warranty. Anybody that buys one of these, especially in the first few months, I would advise you to go over it with a fine tooth comb, with a fluorescent or an LED light. Look at it from every angle to make sure there are no problems with your paint. And if there are, you've got 30 days to make a warranty claim. You have 30 days from the day you take delivery of the bike to make a cosmetic warranty claim on your motorcycle. So, but apparently Honda is going to make good on the painted parts. I was able to actually buff out one of the problems. I was able to get some polishing compound and take care of one of those issues, but the other one is pretty bad. At least on my trip to West Texas, which is a 350-mile trip, and I'm anxious to see how it performs and how the gas mileage is. Um, my initial findings on gas mileage, I keep track of my gas using an app on the phone. 
and uh, let's just say that the computer on the motorcycle is very very generous to itself uh, the last fill up I had the motorcycle claimed to be getting 43 miles to the gallon my calculations were 39 miles to the gallon so you can take that for what it's worth but once I get it on the road for a three, 350 mile trip, two or three fill-ups along the way, is I usually stop every 100 or 150 miles just to rest my legs and take a drink of water and get gas. I don't get in a hurry on a road trip. But as you can see, we're getting into five o'clock traffic here. It's about 4.50 in the afternoon and all the people getting off work. So we've got a lot of traffic in Dallas-Fort Worth today. This windshield actually does a very good job uh, at its highest position of keeping the wind off of me. I'm six foot two. Wind. I get a little bit on my shoulders, lower legs, hands. But these upper air deflectors that I installed recently uh, do help keep some of that wind off your hands and some off your body as well. You still get wind coming over the tops of these mirrors though. There's a, almost like a channel in between the windshield and the mirrors that just kind of directs air right over the top of your knuckles as you ride. And the only way I know to resolve that is gonna be somebody's gonna to have to come out with some, some of these little winglets for the, for the windshield that are a little bit wider and they might block some of that wind coming through that channel. It's got really good heated grips. The heated seat works great. And in fact, I'm kind of getting used to the seat. Uh, the first time I rode the bike, I thought the seat might've been a little hard, a little stiff. Um, but I actually kind of like the seat. I'm, again, I'm 180 pounds. If I was 250 pounds, I don't know if I'd like it or not, but it seems to work pretty good for me. I think it's going to be comfortable enough. I just need to get my Utopia backrest on. And in fact, uh, I think I'm going to have one coming in here in a couple of weeks, and I'll be doing a video on installing that Utopia backrest. But we'll be doing all the videos like I did for the previous version. And I appreciate all you guys out there that have bought those DVDs and bought those on-demand videos. And we're going to still sell the videos for the previous version because, you know, there's like a million gold wings out there from 2001 to 2017. So there's still a, a big market out there. And as those bikes get older, they're going to need more maintenance. I hope you all are enjoying the YouTube videos. I really enjoy your comments. Please take the time to fill in comments. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe to the channel. You know, the more subscribers, the better. Another thing Honda did really well on this bike is with the switches. Uh, I was getting a little annoyed with all the switches on that previous model of Goldwing. But this bike is laid out very nicely. The hand controls are really well made. All the switches feel like they're very high quality. Uh, at night, they look, they light up well. Everything is easy to, to find and to see. You don't have that myriad of switches that we had on the previous Goldwing. So I really, I like the layout of the dash and the switches and the hand controls. The little air vent up by the windshield, I'm not sure if that is really that useful. It's uh, almost, I think it's almost a gimmick. I tried it this last weekend, and uh, I couldn't tell that it really brought that much air uh, into me, you know, from that windshield area. The little air deflectors that I installed, though, when you turn those in, they really do direct some air onto your body and onto your hands. So those work good in warm weather. In fact, I would say they probably work better in warm weather than they do in cold weather. And again, put your comments down below. Love to hear from you. Subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, this is Cruise Man.